Hey guys, my name is Pixie and this is the super easy leaderboard tutorial. First off, in order to make a leaderboard, you obviously need a database. At the very least, you need usernames and scores, and in order to save that data, you need to put it into a database. There are a couple of different storage components that you can use in Appy Builder. We've talked about TinyDB, which would not be the best option in this case. We've created a user hierarchy in Firebase, but I really, really want you guys to stop using Firebase for user data. Firebase is great for things like the wallpaper app that we just did, but for user data, you really need to start using a Fusion Table or SQLite. So we'll be using the Fusion Table as the database for this tutorial. If you haven't watched Fusion Table Part 1 or Part 2, you might want to pause this video and go watch those tutorials. We'll be using the same Fusion Table for this project that we used in the Fusion Table tutorial. Now remember, you are allowed to play around with this table, but don't be surprised if something doesn't work, because you're not the only one messing around with it. You can use my Fusion Table to bring up the project, but when you recreate this app, use your own Fusion Table data. I've even changed the username of user ID 1 to remind you to use your own Fusion Table. Alright, so let's get started. The leaderboard free design is actually really easy because what I'm about to show you, we've already done before in the Fusion Table tutorial. In fact, if you watched the Fusion Table tutorial and you asked me how to make a leaderboard, you're probably gonna bop yourself upside the head and be like, oh my God, I already know how to do this. So design the screen however you want. As usual, I like the alignments at center center. I've changed the action bar color. I'm using the same background image that I use for a lot of these tutorials. And the title says leaderboard free because this is the free design. So let's use the new spacer component for padding. We no longer need to creatively create padding. We can use this nifty spacer component. If you haven't used this component, it gives you a default height to add some vertical padding, but you have to set the width to add some horizontal padding. You also won't see this gray box when you run the app. It's just colored gray so you can visibly see this component on the design viewer. Set both spacers height to fill parent. In between the spacers, add a vertical arrangement. You can rename it if you want. I'm gonna call it container leaderboard, and I'll set this to a card. When the layout component is set to a card, it usually fills the entire width of the screen, and we don't need to set the alignments for this container, but I'll go ahead and change the horizontal alignment to center just in case. Place a custom list view inside the container leaderboard. You can make this look however you want. For this color scheme, I like to use the light gray background. I'm gonna set the height to 60%. I'll set the image size to 35, so it's gonna be really tiny. And the selection color is cyan. Now you may be wondering, since I set the screen's alignment to center center, why I even bothered with the spacers. And it's because I'm gonna add a menu down here at the bottom with three buttons that take you to two other screens that I'm gonna show you in the wrap up. But it's not necessary for this tutorial. It's just a little extra stuff you guys can play around with when you download the project. Lastly, we need a Fusion Table component. I'm using the exact same API key, P12 file, and service account that I used in the Fusion Table tutorial. Remember that you should be using your own Fusion Table data. We're not gonna go over how to set up a Fusion Table in this tutorial because that's already been covered in separate videos. That takes care of the free design. Let's head over to the box editor. In this part of the tutorial, I do expect you to have already watched the Fusion Table tutorials because the concept I'm about to show you is identical to the concept from the Fusion Table tutorial. The difference is that we're not getting all of the data, we're just getting the parts that we need. In the blocks editor, we have six global variables and they're set up just like the Fusion Table tutorial. Fusion Table users is the unique ID that represents our Fusion Table from the internet. Users fields will store all of our data from the Fusion Table, but for this leaderboard, we don't need every single column. We just want the username, the avatar, and the high score column. That's it, so we don't need to make a list for all the other columns. We're just grabbing the data that we need for this screen. Now the last variable request is optional. We're only making one request to Fusion Table, but I want you guys to get in the habit of creating the request variable for your Fusion and Firebase events. I keep seeing a lot of people's blocks on the community and they just throw a bunch of blocks into these events and then they're like, I don't understand why it's not working. And it's because you're not telling the event what to do. So get in the habit of creating conditions inside of your events. The initialize list procedure will populate our users fields list. We need to make sure that we call this procedure as soon as the screen starts. We need three fields worth of data, so this list should have three items. 
We need a list of usernames, a list of avatars, and a list of high scores. We can also set up our query inside of this procedure. The request variable is set to data, but you can name it whatever you want. And our query looks like this. Select username, avatar, and high score from Fusion Table users, order by high score descending. Then we send the query. That's going to trigger the Fusion Table Control .got result event. Again, we only have one request, but get in the habit of creating this condition inside of your events. Once this event triggers, does the request equal data? Yes, it does. So this condition executes. Then we're going to do exactly what we did in the Fusion Table tutorial. Take all of the requested data from the Fusion Table and store it into internal lists. Our Fusion Table currently looks like this. Since we're sorting by high score descending, the data we receive from the Fusion Table will look like this. So all of these usernames in this order will get put into user's username. All of the avatars in this order will get put into user's avatar. All of the high scores in this order will get put into user's high scores. Once we sort our data into the appropriate list, we remove the first index from each of these three lists because the first index contains the names of the columns and we don't really need that information. Now we display this information in a custom list view. The custom list view has a built-in procedure called elements from list. This procedure accepts two lists for both arguments, meaning in order to display the words, you need a list of words. And in order to display the pictures, you need a list of pictures. We literally did an example of this in the Fusion Table tutorial. You might remember seeing this. It's a custom list view of avatars and usernames. And we just created this list in the Fusion Table event. For a leaderboard, we want to see the score beside the username, right? So we need a way to combine the username with the score. We can do that easily by making a local list inside of this procedure. Since we need to get the values from two different lists, we can use numeric iteration. In this case, we loop from the first index in both lists, and we end at the last index in both lists. During each loop, we populate list items with the current index of high score and the current index of username. Once we finish this loop, we can take our local list and set it as the list for list items. All right, time to run this and see what it looks like. On the left side, we have the free design, and on the right side is the design for the Pixie Bomb Squad. We've got a simple leaderboard, and the scores are shown from highest to lowest. Those of you who want to try and recreate the Pixie Bomb Squad design, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you should have no trouble doing this. It's literally just a horizontal arrangement, a label, and I just made it look pretty. So get creative and show me what you guys come up with. I really want to see what you can do. Time to wrap this up. I placed a menu at the bottom of the design just to give you guys something fun to play around with. If you click on the home button, it will take you to screen one. And again, we've already done sign in and sign up examples, so the blocks on this screen should look familiar. We can sign in with any valid username from the test fusion table. If I try to log in without entering anything, I'll get an error. If I try to log in with an invalid username or password, I'll also get an error. So I'm just gonna log in as Peaches, and the password for this account is purple. And that takes you to the event. This little event has already been covered in the spinning wheel tutorial, so make sure you watch that video if you haven't seen this screen before. When I'm logged in, the title bar says, hello Peaches, and the current high score for this user is 42. I can spin the wheel, and this time the result label will show the slice that I've landed on and give me a random score. So if I land on 2, I'll get a score from 20 to 29. If I land on 3, I'll get a score from 30 to 39, etc. Remember during the spinning wheel tutorial, I told you that the slice number 1 is the hardest slice to land on and should have the best prize. So if the user lands on slice 1, they'll get a score from 100 to 1000. If I keep spinning this wheel and exceed my current high score, then I'll get a notification and my high score will be updated in the app and in the fusion table. In the blocks editor for the event screen, the blocks on the left side are what I've added for this project and the blocks on the right side are from the original spinning wheel tutorial. Remember that your challenge for the spinning wheel tutorial was to take the points and store them in your database by finishing the get result procedure. So if you weren't able to figure out that challenge, the answer is actually on this screen. 
Good job, guys. We are done. Visit my Patreon page where you can find out more about being part of the Pixie Bomb Squad. Check out the Appy Builder community where you can get help on projects you're currently working on and find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye.